Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. This is another live broadcast uh, brought to you by uh, the city of Johannesburg, the speaker of Johannesburg, Mayor Nongaba Mulwele. Uh, through the legislature, we bring you these uh, uh, weekly discussions where we are having these civic education dialogues with uh, a number of people that come through, either as specialists or as students. Today, we're excited uh, to have the young people to join us today. Uh, they're going to tell us how they feel about this lockdown, what sort of frustrations they're going through, this whole online learning, uh, the social distancing. So they're going to tell us all about that. So let me introduce you our panel and uh, also giving thanks to Madam Speaker, who will say a word or two in a short while. And also to say big thanks to uh, Dr. Fundile Nyati, who's also <laughs> joining us today. And uh, today is... Um, a civic education discussions with Madam Speaker and the Jobek Student Council leaders. Uh, we are joined by the Mayor of uh, Jobek Student Council. Uh, he's Mr. Tari Tahir Tayob. Uh, welcome to you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, also, Kumo Makunyani, who is the Chairperson of uh, Public Safety. Lungile Chakala, who is the Chairperson of Health. Uh, Cameron Sharp, who is the Chairperson of Youth and Child Affairs. Uh, we are also joined by Glorious Nkabinde. Uh, apologies, I don't, I don't know if it's Nkabinde or Nkabinde. Uh, she's the chairperson of art and culture there. Keleto uh, Zwane, who's the chairperson of sports, and Natalie uh, Kopsosi Deris. I apologize for that. Uh, you'll correct me when you introduce yourselves. Uh, she's the chairperson of environment. And of course, I know uh, Mom Brenda or Auntie Brenda also joins us. Uh, we might be joined by a councillor as well uh, from the city of Johannesburg. So let me take this opportunity and say good afternoon to you, Madam Speaker. Thank you for joining us and to you too, Dr. Nyati, and to the students, welcome to it. Madam Speaker, you can take the platform and welcome everybody, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sipo, uh, our host, uh, Dr. Nyati, our co-host. Co good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to all the Johannesburg Student Council leaders, led by the Mayor, Tahir Tayob, and all the chairpersons present in this platform uh, today. Good morning. You are all welcome to another civic education discussion on COVID-19, as Sipo has correctly indicated that we are on a drive of civic education and to look at all the aspects and the impacts uh, that COVID-19 has brought uh, to our lives. Uh, we are joined by our, our Johannesburg, the young, one of the youngest councillors in the city of Johannesburg as well, and her name is Ndogozo Shezi. She welcomed Togozo. I see you are with us. You have joined the Johannesburg Student Council. Maybe Zipo, it will be important for our viewers, uh, for the benefit of the viewers, just to give a little bit of a background on what is the Student Council of Johannesburg and uh, how was it formed and what was the purpose. Uh, so I think, Dr. Kanyati, I should just take us through that, as especially for our viewers, that. Um, Johannesburg Student Council is a program of the Speaker of Council. Uh, it was initiated in 2007 uh, by the then Speaker Nandimaya Tulakosa, and it continued under the leadership of the Speaker uh, thereafter, uh, who was uh, Ngelentingane. So this was created as a platform for meaningful participation especially for the public. It was a public participation and engagement with young people, with the youth. It was targeting the youth. It was mainly for the youth to understand how government works and what role can young people play. It was based on the fact that Johannesburg is a young city. We have a lot of young people in the city of Johannesburg and we said and we said how best we can engage with young people. As you know that young people are saying nothing uh, about us without us. So this program has been existing for 12 years now. 
and it is a two-year term program. We recruit from 50 different schools across the city of Johannesburg in all the seven regions of Joburg. We, we recruit from those schools and we recruit two per school. And uh, after we have recruited two per school, we balance the 50-50 gender parity. And after we have recruited, we, they then go for a camp where they elect their leadership. They elect the mayor, they elect the mayoral committee and the chairpersons. It does not end there. Members of the Johannesburg Student Council alumni now, which is active and engaged, it engages young adults. So it just launched this year, the Johannesburg Student Council Alnet Networking Platform, which in fact it was launched in 2019 uh, in a bid to provide support, to provide coaching and mentoring to existing councillors, because every two years we have new councillors. So those who have been councillors before, they mentor and coach the new ones and also uh, transfer the values and relevance of the program to, to young people because they benefit. I think they are going to share with us what they are benefiting from the program and uh, those who have graduated from the program. So coming back to today's discussion, following the president's call for us to continue with this lockdown and his address to the nation last night, we heed his call to stay at home, to wash our hands, to sanitize, uh, but most importantly, to practice social distancing. I must say that I am excited to have you here today, our young people, young people of the city of Johannesburg, to discuss this very important topic of COVID-19 on how it affects you as young people. Um, uh, how do you feel by staying at home during the COVID-19. Uh, also to thank the, uh, the parents who are watching this, this program today for connecting through Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Dr. Nyati and Sipo, today we want to hear from the young people how they are coping with the lockdown. How they are coping with staying at home with parents how are they coping coping with online learning and we must also speak to those who who might not have the advantage of connecting uh, to the platform that maybe uh, you are uh, you are on those who are from rural areas maybe who who don't have the necessary network how do they cope with the online uh, with the online learning and um, i think we are going to share those views today and maybe try to come up with a plan on assisting those who don't have access to internet we also want to hear how we as parents can also make time to play, uh, to read and teach young people, to parent, because I think this is our opportunity as parents now to exercise our parenting skills. I have also noted that some parents have taken on, on, the, new social, on the social media platforms uh, such as TikTok to create fun videos uh, due to the boredom at times. I hear some young people are saying that their parents are embarrassing themselves with fun and crazy dance moves. Um, so we, we welcome those active and creative parents because we have to be creative as well as parents because this is a new era for us as parents. So without taking much time, I look forward to our engagement and I look forward to hear from our young people and parents at home, please send us messages through the platforms that I have mentioned so that uh, together we can raise a nation uh, for tomorrow, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Madam Speaker, thank you very much. We appreciate your comment. Uh, Dr. Nyati, just uh, a quick one from your side and then uh, we can uh, ask the, the mayor to uh, just uh, start and uh, do his introductions. 
And uh, if we can start with the mayor, the speaker, and so on, just by a line of leadership, um, and then we can just move on from there. Is that okay, everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Dr. Nyati, uh, do you want to say a word or two before we start with the young people? Yeah, All right. That. No. Um, look, from my side, I, I'm just appreciating the engagement, uh, you know, the platform that uh, the speaker has created uh, for engagements with the youth was, I truly believe that there shouldn't be any decisions about the youth without them being, you know, uh, involved. And so uh, rather than me talking a lot, uh, I think it's time to actually allow them to talk. So uh, I think uh, the mayor should actually, you know, start and say something. All right, so Madam Mr. Mayor, Ed, thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Honorable Councillor Nontreba Mogwele, Dr. Fundile Nyati, Mr. Sipo Masipo, Madam Speaker, Elizabeth Macquarie, members of the executive committee and fellow student councillors and citizens of Johannesburg. My name is Tahesh Teob. I am the acting mayor of the Johannesburg Student Council. I took up my term of office in 2019. And I've been Essentially, what we as the student council do is we let me participate in community-based organizations and, and activities. And secondly, we aim to represent students at a local level and aim to preach the aims of the students and what we can do to achieve our goals that are set out. Um, I would like to now hand it over. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can we request everybody to mute? so that we, we are not disturbed by the background uh, noise. Can everybody please mute uh, so that we can hear the speaker. The, 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 the one who's speaking should unmute and all of us, we should mute, please. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would now like to hand over to the junior Madam Speaker, um, Honorable Councillor Elizabeth McCoy. I'd like to thank my fellow councillor, Councillor Tayyab, for that fantastic greeting. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as said, I'm the previous speaker. My term was from 2018 to 2019. I'm currently attending the German school in Johannesburg. And I'd just like to say that uh, during this outbreak, I've been very impressed with my school community, my community at large with the amount of help given from one person to another person in this time of crisis. So I'd like to hand over to the other councillors now so that they may introduce themselves as well. Uh, the next councillor to introduce themselves, please. Uh, Okay, let, let, I can see their names from this side. Uh, Cameron, Sh um, yeah, Cameron can, yeah, Cameron Sharp. Um, good evening, Madam Councillor and fellow councillors. Um, I'm Cameron Sharp. I am the former chairperson of Youth and Child Affairs. Um, just what I learned personally out of all this coronavirus and lockdown um, time, I learned how to spend time with my family and I learned how to be grateful for the people around me um, because my school has been using a lot of initiatives, making sure people have internet to go to school and making sure that we don't miss a moment of our own trip here. It's just so special. And I think that's what we want to ensure as a student council for all our metrics and all our other students in South Africa. Yeah. And then I'll hand over to the next student council to introduce themselves. Mike Sposa. Mike Sposa. Mike Sposa. Um, yes, hello. I am Mika Teko Sposa, but I go by Mika. Um, this lockdown has helped me to appreciate all my friends because I haven't seen them 
in a while. Also, the time I spend away from home. But other than that, I've also learned to study more, to appreciate my schoolwork, and also work hard. All right. Um, yes, the one who's... All right. Kahiso Musina. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Kakhiso Messina. I am from Holy Family College in Parktown. And pretty much this lockdown has, has made me appreciate how much teachers and students, that, that interaction is so important. And I have learned a lot and it's been hard with the self-studying and the self-teaching, but... I've been going on with calls with my friends so we can have that interaction of teacher, student, 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 and yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Natalie Kapso. Hi, um, so I'm Natalie Kapso Sideris. I was the former chairperson for environment in the term 2018-2019. Um, I really am grateful for being part of the student council. It impacted my life a lot. Through this pandemic and this lockdown, I think I've really learned um, how to have self-discipline because we have, 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 sorry, we have been having to do online school um, during this lockdown with our teachers, communicating with them, et cetera. And unless you have um, a very strict self-discipline, you don't actually get the work done because you're the only person that's there to discipline yourself. So I've learned how to do that. And I'm also um, very grateful for the government's um, reaction to the lockdown. I think they acted really fast and they've done a really great job at keeping COVID-19 pandemic under wraps. Yes, I'll hand over to the next counselor. Thanks. Keleto. Um, greetings, everyone. I'm Keleto Zwane, former chairperson of sport. And um, what I've basically taken from this pandemic and everything that's going on is I'm, well, chair, chairperson of sports and I'm a sporty person. So sports have been cancelled and everything. And I've really then now needed to incline myself to books and everything else to fill up my time. And as a nipple player, the only social distancing that you know is staying three feet apart from people. So... With that said, it's mainly a point of self-discipline and ensuring that although tithe, uh, times are tough, but it's only tough people who last. So in this, it's a matter of being self-disciplined, ensuring that you do follow a uh, protocol and heeding the president's call and just making sure that everything goes smoothly so that we can beat this. And that's pretty much basically it. Thank you. No, 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 no. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Councillor Shezi, and thank you to Madam Speaker for the introduction earlier on. Um, I think during this time of COVID-19 and everybody being isolated at home, um, it really has um, stimulated the spirit of um, Ubuntu from all of us because not everybody is privileged as we are first to be online like this, to be in such discussions, but also to have food uh, in their homes. So we, we, we like to remember those who are unable to be with us, who are unable to go online and do their schoolwork. But uh, such platforms, I think they're very important and, and I'm actually looking forward to listening to the young ones and, and their experiences in this. All right. Faith Van yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me here. I'm one of the current student council members for the 2020 to 2021 term. Um, throughout this lockdown experience, I found myself becoming very close and comfortable being myself. I don't feel so under pressure to look a certain way or act a certain way. And I don't feel so nervous or anxious talking to people on phone calls anymore. I think I've become very comfortable with speaking openly because I'm around myself and I can have my own thoughts and almost be free in my own mindset. 
Um, I also have found myself worrying a lot for many of my friends at school who don't have access to internet and can't, don't have the means of getting their schoolwork complete. And as a dancer, I've really found a new love and a new appreciation for my art form. I never realized before how much I depended on it to get me through things. Um, and now that I don't really have space or really an open area to dance or people to dance with, I found that I've definitely took my art form for granted. Um, but I'm sure as a nation, we will be able to make get through this. And I think the government has handled the situation very well. And I'm looking forward to the new steps that we'll be taking to get our country through this. I'll hand over to the next councillor. Thank you. Makosandile. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Marco Sandile. I just started my term as a counselor. And what I've learned during this lockdown is I actually appreciate and miss the routine of waking up every morning, preparing myself and going to school. I actually miss the interaction between other people. And staying here at home has made it kind of difficult to actually talk to other people because some of us don't really have good network or network at all to communicate and do schoolwork. So I've really appreciated the interaction between people and the, this again, the schedule we keep during the week. And I'll hand over to the next counselor. Thank you. All right, uh, Nzaka. Nzaka. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, so uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, so I'm a new, I'm new to term, right? So, yeah. So during this whole lockdown, um, I've learned to self-discipline myself. Uh, I don't like, okay, I do, but I'm more sport. I'm more of a sport person instead of a, so it's in the classroom kind of person, but I've really learned how to how to do. Okay, I've always been doing my schoolwork, but I learned how to do it at a like how can I say it, to make the quality even better, because now I have all this time in my hands, so why not? So yeah, um, the the challenges I've been having is okay. I'm not a person who really likes staying indoors. I like being outside doing sporty things but it's it's been okay uh i've been bonding with family which is really nice um i've really seen a lot of new things and i'm trying to learn new skills as i go along so yeah that's it i'll hand over to the next counselor nonka zimulo nonka zimulo ngabinde yes yeah, um, hi everyone. Um, it's good to see my former counselors again. Um, I'm Nokazimulo Gabinde, Glorious is my other name, um, and former chairperson of Art and Culture. So, the biggest challenge I think um, I've faced as a matric student is that we are losing a lot of work and it is really hard to communicate on social media when you need help with something with schoolwork. And I think that is a problem that, you know, I'm sure each and every single student is actually facing. But at this time, I think the only way to go for school is to have online learning and all of that. And it's sad that some other students cannot get access to, you know, computers, um, things that we have to actually go online and they they are set back on their, on their education and I think that is something that is sad and there should be solutions to that and I'm excited to actually hear what is the plan going forward for education in this uh, whole pandemic. I'll hand over to the next student. Muleleki. Muleleki. Um, yes, sir, I'm here. Um, good afternoon to my fellow counselors and everybody else. Um, the, the challenges I'm, I'm facing right now, I'd say it's like internet connection because like, oh, the attack is costly these days. And I tried changing my network provider to telecom, thinking it would be better, but then I still face the same challenges. And 
um, regarding to schoolwork, I thought it was going to be easy, but it's not as easy as, as I thought it would be. Because, like, we have factors that dis- dis- disrupting us, like TV, internet. But I really encourage myself every day to go through my schoolwork and other things I need to do. And during this time, I think for me, time is more important. We didn't do before, like, playing board games. And, yeah, I think this is the perfect time to bond with your family. Thank you. I'd hand over to the next counselor. Big, uh, sorry, beat, beat, uh, la, legend. Sorry, man. Uh, I can't pronounce that name. <laughs> yeah, but beat, legend. Yes. Oh, legend, la, legend, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think with this, um, Lockdown school, it's like we get to work and um, we do our best in it, but if we do have questions, it is sometimes harder. I have a friend that um, doesn't really focus well when he cannot speak with a person face to face. So he's really struggling with doing the schoolwork, but um, you know, the parents do do their best to help the children, and I think they'll be thankful for the lockdown to be over. But I think that um, it is also taking our education a little bit further and it is something we can use long term, definitely. Uh, I'll hand to the next counselor. Kolwani. Kolwani. Yes. Hello, my name is Kolwani Michael. I'm one of the counselors from 2020 and 2021. Two. Can you raise your voice, please? No problem. This, this lockdown taught me to be, to bond with my family and friends. And it taught me to be patient and self-control. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nasim Hasim. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nasim Hasim. I am attending the German school, and uh, this uh, this self quarantine lockdown has taught me that education is a very important thing, and there are certain people that have certain ways of learning. And through these obstacles that I have had to face with the online learning, um, such as if I don't understand the work, I might I might have to wait a few days before what? I see the teacher again, such and. I also believe, I also, um, through this, I have learned perseverance and improvisation um, through these obstacles. And I, I honestly just think that if we, if we can help each other, it would be much better for the rest of us. I'd like to hand over to the next speaker. Um, Mufaro. Yes, uh, good afternoon to everyone. So I'm a counselor who has just started my term. So basically what lockdown has taught me is that it would be, it's, it's more convenient to be at school and to do work at school. So then like, it would just like what everybody else has been saying um, with regards to school and how it's more convenient to be with your teachers in terms of communication and to be with your friends as well. And in terms of sports, you know, being able to do a sport because now at home for some of us, it becomes really boring. If we don't have a sport that entertains us. Thank you. I'd like to hand over to the next speaker. Right. Um, Onati Mati. Yeah. Matibela. Yeah, yeah, it's Matibela. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, what this lockdown is really doing is it's sparking the spirit of Ubuntu. I think someone already said this, but. I, I think it's really important because us as South Africans today, we have so much that's dividing us. And I think after this pandemic is over and the cure is found, we'll be stronger and uh, more together or we'll be uh, more, more connected as a people because this, uh, this pandemic doesn't discriminate. Uh, sorry, uh, it doesn't discriminate 
it doesn't discriminate it's 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 just there so i really think that it's sparking the spirit of togetherness as south african which is something we've lost over the years but i really think we're gonna we're gonna come together again after this is over thank you uh brenda like andrews the camera is, is off there Is she still there? Uh, Brenda Andrews. She's not the um, Elga Skuman. Uh, hi, my name is Elga Skuman. I come from Wishko Randberg and I live in Randberg. I apologize for no video. I do not own a webcam or something. Yeah. And I think it's very important to just be yourself in this lockdown. There isn't any pressure from the outside, from the social society for you to be someone else and i think you should just use this time to rediscover yourself and just work at your core elements thank you very much i uh, i'd pass on to the next counselor. maliha suleiman maliha suleiman all right okay riaz chunara Riaz Chunara. Okay. Uh, Lindo Kuse. All right. Lerato Miaga. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Lerato. Yes. Sorry. I joined in the middle of it, so I didn't hear what. The introduction is about, but I feel it's about, is it about improving yourself during lockdown or what? All right. It's just your experience of the lockdown to date. Um, I think the lockdown has been, has been good and bad because of the two extreme worlds that we live in. For, for us who can afford, it's been bearable. But for people like my cousins and my grandma who are out in the township, it's been a complete nightmare. Yeah. Yes, I'd like to hand over to the next speaker. Thank you. Amber Jade. Amber Jade. Uh, good evening, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so I found that the lockdown has been quite an eye opener with um, seeing how we can actually also come together as a community to start fighting back and also learn to do more research on our on the topic and not just um, voice our opinions on not on hearing what everyone else is saying, um, as well as that it, it has helped me personally with my family and uh, growing at school. Have we gone through everybody talk? Uh, we almost there. We almost there. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I think it's okay. Um, okay. because after, after this, we'll then get the ones who are who've got official positions to actually then okay. give us their experiences. We'll definitely take more than an hour. Perfect. All right. Um, there are some uh, who don't have their names appearing. There's a lady with a lot of hair. Uh, but I can't see a name. That's the one who's smiling right now. Can you say something? <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, firstly, good afternoon, Honorable Madam Speaker, and everyone in my fellow JC um, alumni. Right. Um, I am Louis Lenjalala, and I'm representing JC's um, health portfolio as its chairperson. Well, I have observed the effects of COVID-19 at a much more close and personal Excuse me, Ex excuse me, excuse me. The guys who are not speaking, can they mute their phones so that we can hear uh, the person who is on the floor, please? Uh, can can you can you start afresh? The speaker was on the floor. Can she start afresh? Uh, 
I don't know if she's still there. I don't, uh, I don't see her image, Doc. Uh, oh, all right. Look, okay, is there anyone else who has not had a, a quick say? Me. I haven't said anything. All right, please, oh. Riaz, uh, go ahead. Okay, so my name is Riaz Chunara, and what I've learned from the lockdown is that school is actually something we have to start appreciating a lot more than and we do as well as our teachers because when school is going on normally and everything's normal then we're taking it for granted we're not appreciating it we're disrespecting it and now that lockdown is happening we can all see that how it would be without that and how it is without that so i think that when we go back we all have to start appreciating what we have a lot more thank you thank you uh, there is a young lady who's using a galaxy a6 um uh, yes, that one. Yes, please say something quickly. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, my name is Jennifer Deep. I'm currently um, in the Johannesburg Student Council. I come from the school president. And my, I learned to, during this lockdown, appreciate my family as they have been there for me. Um, through everything and as well as appreciating my teachers as they we don't really know like appreciate them during school as we don't like now when we don't understand something they can't immediately help us whereas in school they can help us immediately if we go to them or we could go after school or whatever but now we have to wait like maybe two or three days before we get an answer and just missing interactions with people and that, that's what I've been facing during the lockdown. Thank you. Uh, Sipo, can you take over? Um, I think both who have not yet, is there anyone who has not had a, their quick say? Me. All right. Uh, Kumo Magunya. Yeah. yeah. Good morning to, good afternoon to everybody. My name is Kumo Magunyani. Um, what I have learned during this period is that Teaching yourself is very hard and we are so used to having an educator who guides us and helps put emphasis on the things that are very important for us to learn. And now you have to do that all by yourself. I am the former chairperson for public safety and in my portfolio, I have realized that South Africa has a challenge with policing these regulations and people are not adhering to the lockdown and we're seeing so many in incidents on our television screens, on the news of people just breaking the rules because they think that this thing is not going to affect them. So I feel like the public should be, should cooperate with the government in order to tackle this whole pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there anyone who has not said anything? I haven't said anything. All right, you see, you don't appear your name, but I can see you're using a, a Huawei smartphone. Please say something. I am. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am Neo Leolu from Sir John Adamson High School. Um, during this lockdown, I've realized how difficult it actually is for other people like to adapt to a whole new lifestyle because it might have been easier for me to adapt because I've been in a school that has been giving us resources via online. However, for my older sister, it's her first year and it's been really difficult for her to adapt to a changing lifestyle. And I also worry about my other family in the rural areas because I have the advantage and I'm fortunate enough to live with internet, to have internet and to have all the resources I have to complete my schoolwork. However, other people I know don't have those advantages. Thank you. I all right. I think we, we are we can't get through everybody now. Sipo, can you please take over? Um, yes, Doc. Sipo, please take over. Thank you, Doc. Thank you very much. And uh, also allow me to say thanks to everybody. Uh, we are trying this system, especially with the big numbers that we have 
uh, here today. So uh, please be patient. And also, if we can uh, maybe, um, you know, where possible, we've got less than, uh, uh, we've just uh, taken about 40 minutes just doing introductions. So for all of us to speak, it might just be a challenge. So maybe what we can do at this stage, I know some of you have given us a lot of um, your own experiences and we thank you for that. And uh, there's been some very interesting inputs from your side, especially uh, how some of you have really gotten to understand who you are and found yourselves and found your new strengths. And uh, we thank you for sharing those stories with us. Uh, Madam Speaker, before I can throw questions to them, uh, is there anything you want to say uh, with regards to everything the young people have said? I mean, they've said a lot of challenges and things that can be improved. We heard about uh, lack of access of uh, internet uh, access. Uh, data is a problem for many, many young people in the country. Um, you know, and also some cannot learn on their own. Uh, it's not that difficult. And uh, it takes a lot for some to just develop that uh, ability to be disciplined. Uh, just your, 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 your take, uh, Madam Speaker, on their comments. And then I can throw questions to the young people and hear what they have to say. Thank you very much, Sipo, and thank you very much to the young people for the introduction. I don't want to take much time of the young people because this is their show. And we, we want them to, to, to talk to young people, uh, encourage young people at home who are staying at home. But there are a number of critical issues that young people have raised in their introduction, the issue of discipline and how important discipline is, and now to discipline yourself um, without having a teacher in front of you, how discipline in, in, in doing your school work. But um, what moved me a lot is for the young people on this platform to raise the issue of inequality. Um, they are saying, I think two of them said that they appreciate because they, are, they, they have the advantage of being connected to internet and having all the tools that they can use in doing their studies, but they have relatives, friends, and cousins who don't have uh, these tools and who are unable to access and to do online learning. So this shows, because one of the students here said some of them are in the township here in Johannesburg. So that is raising inequality we are having uh, as a city. And the issue of teaching yourself is very hard. They have raised, um, uh, you know, what they enjoy and also the challenges that they are faced with. So I, I, I really love this platform and this time that is remaining. So for, for them to have a discussion among us themselves and also to encourage other students out there. Absolutely. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. So maybe uh, Tahir, as mayor of uh, acting mayor of uh, Joburg Student Council, maybe to start off with you. Um, uh, I mean, we heard all the challenges. We heard all the, you know, the interesting things that young people are going through. Um, what can we do as uh, Jobek Student Council in this lockdown to inform your peers, your fellow students, what sort of activities do you envision that we could have uh, just to make sure that young people who possibly have access to data, we understand that there are those who don't have access to data, uh, but those who do, what sort of programs do you think we could do to assist uh, and inform and keep our people informed about either COVID-19 or just how they can take care of themselves. Tahir, you want to take a shot at it? Sorry, I was muted. Um, I definitely think that with regards to utilizing okay. technology as a means to improve the, um, you know, lives of our citizens, particularly uh, focusing on the youth, we firstly need to have programs and just basic education about hygiene and health that um, can reach a lot of students. Obviously, it does become very problematic that many students don't have access to, you know, clean running water and hygiene products necessary. But for those who do, the first line of defense would be the education of that to them. 
Secondly, I think what's very important with regards to education is the fact that many students who do have um, access to things such as data and online learning need to utilize that to the best of the potential. Um, there are many free online learning, um, you know, websites and videos and resources that um, can be utilized to improve the education because what becomes highly problematic is once you take away two months of one person's education, it becomes very difficult for them to reintroduce that educate to re-enter that educational space. So it becomes very important that young people have access to not only things like past papers, but textbook, um, you know, uh, textbook uh, resources online. They have access to um, educational videos that they can find, whether it be on YouTube or um, platforms such as Khan Academy. But more importantly, that throughout following these um, educational processes, they remember the reason that we're in this lockdown in the first place. That. You know, we need to be cautious in confronting um, the problem of COVID-19, that basic hygiene and, um, you know, things such as washing your hands and being cleanly needs to be reinforced because that's essentially our first line of defense. And that applies not only to the youth, but the greater South African society. It's definitely two things that need to be taken into account. Absolutely. All right, uh, maybe the follow-up question would be to anyone as well who'd like to take uh, a, an opportunity to respond to it. What happens to uh, students who come from poor backgrounds, have no access to internet? Uh, what sort of ideas or tips uh, can any one of you share and say, uh, you know, uh, this is what you can do at home in the meantime when you have no access to school? Does anybody want to take uh, an opportunity to respond to it, uh, just to give ideas around what kids can do, these uh, students who don't have access to the internet? Um, okay, can I pick I a think person some... to choose? Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I was going to say that I think what can be utilized to the benefit of um, students that don't have access to things such as laptops that, um, you know, I think it has been implemented, but I'm not exactly sure, but things like the SAPC, um, educational programs that can be streamed from um, televisions because more people have greater access to televisions than laptops. Obviously, it doesn't help everyone, but that could be a first step. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me bring you here in, um, also just from a health point of view, Chairperson of Health, Lungile Chakala. Um, let's talk about your portfolio quickly. Um, just uh, any health tips that you would like to share with young students at home? You know that uh, while we are chilling, a lot of people are eating a lot. Um, how do we coordinate your studies and your health? Um, you know, how do you, what, what are sort of the tips that you can give around uh, A, eating healthy, B, exercise? Lungile? I don't think Lungile is here. Okay, Lungile is not there. Uh, who can assist uh, Mulele Kiki? Do you want to respond just on what you are doing to <laughs> keep yourself active? Um, and how do you exercise and make sure that you don't uh, pick up, um, you know, a little bit of uh, weight during this time because we eat so much sometimes. Yeah. Unmute your mic, please. Oh, sorry. Um, hey. Um, so I think with that question and what's going on recently is that a social media thing that's been happening recently on Instagram and on TikTok is um, fitness challenges, where somebody um, challenges you to do 10 push-ups maybe or um, sit-ups in that way. And what makes it even more fun is that they tag it or they incline it to something else. So what I know um, is that I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. So there's a Harry Potter challenge where every time somebody says Harry Potter in the movies, you do 10 star jumps or somebody says Voldemort, or he who shall not be named, you do a certain exercise. And I think that brings it together with enjoying 
something that you do and with the strenuousness of exercise because no one really likes to exercise if we're on if we're honest so in this times i think creativity is the best way to stay fit and something that i've noticed that my sport friends and my netball friends they do things in their rooms where they're able to or outside where they just play or just take a like jog on the spot and it's really got into the point where they just try to be creative with it and that's where things get better because as more innovative that you get with your exercise the more you start to enjoy it and the more you start to forget that it's an, it's an exercise and then you make it into a hobby that you enjoy so i think that's pretty much the basics of trying to exercise in this lockdown absolutely no thank you very much for that anybody else who wants to share just uh uh is it important to 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 balance exercise in this lockdown um and balance school you know cuz i know for some people exercise is an escape it helps them cope with stress um and uh mike siboza do you want to take a, an opportunity to respond to this as well uh yes um since lockdown started my father has showed me a few exercises i could do that could improve my core and just improve my health in general but other than exercising you should also focus on your diet like eating healthy trying to avoid fatty foods and also if you are unaware of that you should educate yourself about it thank you okay cool all right uh doc and um the madam speaker just a, a few comments here um uh people are commenting on our facebook pages uh just to uh acknowledge them and thank them for joining in this conversation um i see mam tandim jalose uh saying that uh, uh the young people are raising proper issues uh the issue of data is expensive and uh just to let you know that she is uh a uh, part of uh government and uh she is noting and she is in the department of communications uh so thank you very much uh mam tandi and uh, maybe mam tandi you can comment and tell us uh you know maybe how far are we uh with regards to cutting down the issue of data because it is expensive um also uh to to mention uh, elias nsinini who's also on facebook says i think the likes of vodacom MTN Telcom and the rest need to really think about reducing their data prices um during this lockdown. So Raelias thank you for your uh, comments and um uh, uh see Rene saying that uh, here is our future leader. So big ups to you guys for joining us uh on this conversation. Uh I see uh, Mam Tandi says students must also visit the Department of Education they have information that will be of assistance to them uh, that's to the speaker to em- encourage and empower young people uh, to use this platform for their benefit so uh, that is at the department of education uh, that has information for you i see abel junior langa uh, says that uh, what about those students who used to get food from school uh, what's your role on that as a student council um and uh, i'll i'll continue so uh maybe is the deputy speaker or the speaker of joba council is she joining us is she here or, for, or have we lost because i see we've also lost uh, one or two or three people um so uh tair maybe if you can advise who can take on this one uh with regards to uh the students who used to get food from school and uh now that this lockdown is taking place they have no longer and they only used to get that one single meal from school um so tair can you direct me maybe to somebody who can tackle this uh, particular comment um i think um natalie would be fit to um answer this question okay natalie Hi. So, I was actually interestingly enough watching a program yesterday on the news except it was set in America about this very problem. And I think in South Africa we equally are challenged with this problem. At our school I know we have um educate refugees from 3 to 6 o'clock and we also provide them with food packages. So it certainly is a very um 
a challenging thing when you think not only is that child getting food there, but they may also bring, be bringing food back to their home. So I think a lot of things that we need to take into account or how ways that we can move forward in dealing with this is we can think about, um, you know, there are a lot of initiatives going around giving people food and we're very grateful for that, but obviously that's not enough. Like there needs to be um, active involvement, not only from citizens that are doing philanthropy and like taking part in charities, but government actually saying, okay, we know we have a problem with people not getting food. And we know that people are actually going hungry. We need to take steps to do this. And then um, citizens can also donate money where they can. I know Backer Buddy is one website that has many initiatives where like citizens from all over South Africa can donate money to them. They provide, they have a lot of initiatives that go into different environments where people do not have food and um, they provide them with food there. Sorry, I'd just like to add into something. Uh, I'm the environmental minister, so I would like to inform everyone that today is the 50th anniversary of International Earth Day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely, well done. Yeah, thank you so much for that feedback. Um, all right, so I think let's also talk about, uh, you know, we've talked about uh, internet access, we've talked about Wi-Fi and data, uh, maybe not being accessible or data being expensive, but let's talk about the, from a security point of view. Um, uh, do you guys have fear? Yes, Madam Suga? Yeah, I think maybe on the question of the person who has asked the question on the, on, 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 on students who have been getting a meal from school, I think to add on Natalie's response is the interventions that were announced by the president last night. Because yeah. part of the interventions is actually addressing uh, the, the question, that question. Um, the fact that now the grant the, for, for the child grant is going to be increased and all the grants that the president has announced will increase i think they will also cater even if um well we know that it, it it won't be enough but at least it is an addition to cater for for such instances so i think we appreciate the interventions that were announced by the president last night absolutely madam speaker thank you for that um so now maybe back to my question around uh, security cyber security and maybe cyberbullying. Uh, Cameron, maybe can I bring you in? Uh, how do you protect yourself from, um, you know, people, um, you know, finding access to your account? Um, you know, how are you preparing yourself from a security point of view, especially relying on online? We've heard about platforms such as the one we're using now, um, that you can be Zoom bombed or something like that. Um, uh, how do you protect yourself from not being swayed by all of the stuff that's coming through? Um, so first of all, something my father taught me is that when you go on the internet on Google and you look for something, make always sure, always make sure that you are pressing on a link that is um, accurate and official, not a link that has weird letters in that doesn't make sense. So that first of all, just um, it just keeps you safe from any viruses. And then second of all, don't go into unnecessary conversations that you don't need. Um, stick to your close friends, stick to people you trust, especially on social media like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and don't necessarily go out and do unnecessary videos or go into unnecessary accounts. Um, just make sure you're safe by doing the things you want to do and doing the things you trust, first of all. Yeah. Okay, Super. cool. Um, sorry, yeah? I suppose. Uh, right. No, there's something I thought, uh, you know, one of the, one or two of the guys mentioned earlier, the yes, issue sir. that they've used this time to actually self-introspect, to find themselves, uh, and also to actually uh, learn new hobbies. So the issue of mental health, I just, I just want to find out if there hasn't been anybody in the group who has felt, you know, challenged by being cooped up at home, uh, you know, from either being sad uh, or very anxious or panicky or, you know, anything like that. And what have they done 
to try and deal with that. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'll speak. Uh, okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, so personally, I think we all have been challenged and we have different ways of facing these challenges. First of all, I like spending time with God because that's my safety, my peace. And maybe that helps you. But if you don't believe in God, maybe there's something else like writing poetry, listening to music, exercising is preferably the best option. Um, and you might even just try and sit a little and just think or look at clouds or just walk around your swimming pool, walk down the stairs, walk up the stairs, etc. All right. Is there anybody else who has adopted a different way of, uh, you know, making use of the time? Um, Is there yeah, anyone who has been journaling every day, you know, of the lockdown, you know? Um, may I please speak? Yes. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. So, okay. I'm Zaka. Now. So, the way, okay, I'm, I'm used to playing rugby and doing a lot of things. So, out of school, I have actually a lot of extra murals. So, I actually play rugby, touch rugby, a part of soccer, like any sport. Uh, I like playing so at first at first it was really difficult for me to like stay at home actually felt like I'm oh, I actually felt like I was going crazy or something but um, as time went I actually I actually got new you know uh, I have I have puzzles that have been sitting there since like I was in grade three and I've never played or built puzzles but uh, I did something with that. Um, I keep myself busy, like I was painting the house the other day and it really keeping, like doing something productive actually calms your nerves and it's actually, it's actually awarding. But that's not the only thing I have to say. I actually have more points. So I don't know if you guys mind or... Please continue, brother. Quickly though. Okay. So you were talking about uh, how can we inform people about this pandemic, right? And how can we give schoolwork to children that do not have access to internet? Um, I've noticed that government is actually doing this thing where they, they use SAPC channels to like give, to give lessons. So that's actually a good idea. And the thing is, most people my age these days, they have WhatsApp and Facebook and data for WhatsApp and Facebook is very cheap. Okay, not very, but it's quite cheap. So you can use those platforms as, as an advantage. You can post schoolwork on there like for a specific school, specific subject, specific grade. You can just post that, okay, if you want your work, go on Facebook. I, I know if a learner my age doesn't have Facebook, than the parents do because I don't, but my parents do. And it would be an actually, it would be a good idea. And the lunch packages for children that only get food from school. Yes, government does provide a certain amount of money for those children, but it's not enough because it's not only for, it's not only for food. You have to understand that those families do not have a parent that is employed. So they actually have to take that money and buy things. They have to bath with clothes and so on. So it would be a good idea if governments actually considered opening their halls for, for learners to go there and get some food packages. And okay, um, okay, this pandemic hasn't really affected me that much because yeah, um, yeah, it hasn't affected me that much, but my community, the community I live in, I live in Deep Loof now. So the problem is in Deep Loof, it's a township. So most people don't actually have access to internet. So what they used to do is go to the library or the park. But since there's, pan uh, there's this pandemic and there's police and soldiers everywhere, you can't actually walk to the park or to the library to go download some school lessons. So that's mm -hmm. that's actually a problem. But if mm -hmm. you if you open up the government halls, then maybe distribute uh, food packages then that would be that would be good because you can also set up like some Wi Fi thing 
and the learners could download everything they need. So that's just something I wanted to bring up. Mm. Thank you. Absolutely. Very good input. And, uh, yeah, are you, are you still on, brother? Yeah, I just need to, uh, one more thing. Um, okay. Social, social networking isn't really a problem these days because everything has a password. So it's not really a, a big problem, but uh, bullying, bullying might take effect because everyone is bored and they might think they're making a small joke, but turn into a big thing and that's quite a problem. And I just think we need to like educate people of how, how other people might take these situations because they might be frustrated that, okay, I'm not making any money this month, so I'm really angry. So some people can't control their anger, so they take it out on other people. So it's just something we need to look into. I don't know how to fix that, but it's just something we really need to look into. Thank you. Sipo, Keleto has been raising a hand. Keleto has been raising a hand, so let's go to her. Okay. But on the point that uh, the previous speaker brought up about the um, um, social security of children not being enough, um, firstly, I would, um, I agree, yes, but I would like to raise a point where alternatively, as much as it may seem like it's not enough, we need to first understand that the department and the government is doing something to alleviate this problem of poverty. So. If we only look at the point whereas it's not enough money, it's not enough money, then where will we go as a nation? Because the president has heeded our call of poverty, and then he had then decided he's going to increase social grant. So therefore, the grant has been increased, and he put money for that. So we cannot keep on looking at the side of it not being enough. We have to look at the positive side of at least there's more money than what they were getting before so that they can get more than what they were doing. So that in this time of lockdown, they can actually survive more than they were previously. So we need mm -hmm. to hear the president's call of him wanting to at least make sure that they meet their uh, basic needs and a bit more so that they can survive if he then decides to extend the lockdown or if he then um, lifts it and so people can be satisfied with them having not had enough food or money previously. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Councillor Shezi, um, can I bring you in? I know you've listened to the young people speak and uh, share with us uh, the experience. Uh, your take as uh, e um on, on what young people are going through um, can you take this uh, moment to share with us? Thank you, Sipo. And indeed, I've, I've listened attentively to the young uh, future leaders of this country. And, and uh, it's very encouraging to hear uh, what comes out of their mouths and their hearts, you know. Um, but I think here, um, the issues that they're raising, we as those who are in positions of power, we should be able to solve some of these issues. Uh, the main one, which we know affects most of us and most of our learners, because whether we like it or not, we are now in the fourth industrial revolution. And um, if, if we're going to leave the young leaders behind, we're gonna have a problem. So maybe Madam Speaker, us as, 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 as council, we can probably then propose that we have, um, because I heard a speaker there complaining uh, in the deep roof area, in terms of access, because it used to be public spaces, of course, people can move now. Maybe what we can look into is that we have mobile um, Wi-Fi uh, vehicles, some sort of which they can be stationed in various townships in our city, and um, and, and and the learners being fixed at their homes, they'll be able to get Wi-Fi um, without them actually leaving their homes. So maybe it's something that we need to look into, so that um, they don't get left behind. And I agree that our public broadcaster, SABC, should continue to do what they're doing um, because they, it, it's accessing everybody at home. But, but lastly, I think the more concerning really is the issue of food. Um, we, we know that the government is a caring one and, and many of our learners have been able to access meals at school. And now them being at home, it adds 
add extra strain into the families and themselves on how they actually going about. But of course, we had the president last night. We, we, we've got some plans that are there. Ours also as a city, as speaker, we, we need to assist uh, the young learners um, and their families in making sure that the 500 billion that has been set aside to assist during this time, that it truly goes to, to, to these young people and their families. Because what is the point of having the money and those who, who really need it don't, don't get? But I think what lastly I'll say, what has come very clearly, which touches me, is how much of caring uh, uh, these leaders are. You know, um, they, they seem to really think for their fellow learners and, and, and fellow compatriots, you know, that not everybody has access, and not everybody is as privileged as them. Look, I heard someone say, you know, to distress, you walk around the swimming pool, you know. Fantastic, great, but we know that not all of us have access to, you know, to walk around the swimming pool. We only go to the swimming pool in the public space, of which today we know that it's a lockdown. So we can't be able to, to access those areas. But I think other than that, um, I really, really appreciate the spirit that is here and the platform that has been given to us. We have homework as leaders elected to represent young people the old and the um, unprivileged. So I, I, th I think that's, that's what I've picked up from, from these discussions. And, and, and Madam Speaker, again, as I say, it's very important for us to, to listen, but also to, to bring solutions to them. Thank you very much. Onati, Onati has been uh, trying to speak. OK. Uh, thank you. I think we need to look at a really good gentleman that will be saying that the government divide an extra 350 million. But we need to look at where this money is actually coming from. That 500 billion that the president was talking about is 10% of GDP. And most of that money is gonna be borrowed because the state doesn't have enough money. So I really think they need to look at reopening the educational sector because even with these interventions, these, the, the, the initiatives won't reach everyone. Even if we do give, uh, people free Wi-Fi. It won't reach everyone. Not, not everyone has a phone. So it's that sort of thing because we live in the most unequal society in the world. So we cannot, like Europe or America, try and blanket or try and have one solution for our problems because South Africa is a very special case. You can't just solve its problems with uh, one solution. You need to let it sort of reverse. Because this is not a capitalist society where it's living for themselves, or it's not a, a communist society that the government is So I really think they need to look at opening the educational system because people are struggling. Even people, uh, uh, when we were introducing ourselves, the lady, the lady in matric said that the workload, you can't cope because it's too much and people aren't used to doing this. So imagine how many matrics are feeling that, and she's feeling that with the internet. So that's the sort of things we need to look at uh, right now. The government needs to be looking at right now. Thank you. All right. Uh, I want to pick you, Nonka Zimu, Nonka Binde, just to also make your input. Uh, I mean, a lot has been said. What is your take on just uh, some of the last few comments in the last five minutes? Um. I think that with the education sector, um, it's really hard to actually um, try and satisfy each and every single student in the country because um, most, I think the concentration has been put on um, basic necessities uh, the government has focused on basic necessities instead of education, putting it first, because um, I think our health comes first. But um, I really do think that um, moving forward, when we are able to go back to school, there should should be a really like there should be a really like good thought process through you know how to 
to recover the education system and all that has been lost during this lockdown. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Zilungile uh, Mo you haven't said anything. Do you want to give us your input uh, with everything that's been said? Um, yes. Can you currently hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay. Um, hi to everyone. I am Zilungile Muhulati, as you said. Um, regarding everything, um, I've been really trying to get my schedule right and really um, make a timetable that I will strictly follow to um, order my life because when not having something to do, it really becomes very frustrating. And um, due to, um, regarding um, the president's address yesterday, he said that they're going to increase tax, uh, pay as you earn, pay, pay as you earn tax by 35%. Um, Really, when, when I was sitting in the dining room, listening to that, um, my mom really complained. Everybody else was sitting in the dining room who works complained about that, um, that the, um, the government is really raising um, the, the pay as you earn tax. Can, Sipo. Yes, sir. Can I correct uh, you know, this, this point? Because I think it's very prevalent. And I just want to okay. correct it, all right? Uh, Zulungile, yes. is it, who, who was talking, was it Zulungile? Yeah. Yes, it was me. Yeah, no, 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 the, the government is not going to increase pay as you earn. Mm. That was something about relief that is being given to employers. Employers, when you work for an employer, they take tax from you and they take that tax and give it to SARS every month. Now, some businesses are struggling because there's not enough business. So the government is saying, instead of taking that 100% uh, uh, you know, pay as you earn that you, a, a business was supposed to pay every month, they can uh, now only send 65%, meaning they can keep 35% of the tax that they've already taken from employees and pay it later without having to pay uh, any penalties. So it's not about employees. It's about ensuring that employers have got some money to pay salaries, and then they can pay some of that pay as you earn tax later. So it's got nothing to do with individuals. Mm. All right. Um, so it's a benefit for employers to delay paying up to 35% of what they were supposed to pay, which mm. they've already taken from their employees to ensure that they've got money for rent, for, for, for salaries and other things. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, do you wanna continue? Uh, making your input? Zulungile? Oh, I think we've lost her. Um, all right, thank you very much. Uh, I see the comments have been coming uh, quite a bit. Uh, Kolwani, you haven't said a word, brother. Um, can you come in? Uh, just also share your, your input with regards to what's been discussed. Uh, Kolwani, can you hear us? All right, I think... Uh, Kolani cannot hear us there. Um, thank you very much uh, to everybody who's watching on Facebook Live. And uh, uh, we do thank you for your comments. And uh, we'll continue with those comments. Madam Speaker, maybe. Um, all right. I see here. OK. Uh, the meeting has been locked. We do have a few people who are joining us. We've also lost one or two people uh, during this conversation. Uh, we do apologize for that. Um, and we know that maybe data has run out for others. Um, Nassim, can we bring you in? You haven't said a word, brother. Uh, can you share with us just uh, your input with regards to the things we've been saying in this conversation? Uh, yes, I would like to um, add that I think those people who, re who are relying on uh, meals um, for, well, from the schools and those only get one meal a day, 
and those are also relying on social grants. I honestly think that um, what we should do is rather than giving them the money, we should actually put together um, food packs based on how many people are within their family. And then we, and then if there is a balance of money that they might need for something else, we will put that with it, but we will take a portion of that money and, and, and put it towards buying food packs, gross, uh, groceries, uh, hygiene products, and all the rest. And that should be sufficient for those, but we should make it enough and not just be, and not like decrease the amounts, but we should have like a sufficient amount of um, hygiene products and food and groceries so that it can last them for at least a month specifically. All right. Uh, um, also, I just want to give one or two people an opportunity. Malina uh, Suleiman, uh, you haven't said a word. Uh, just your input um, with regards to how we can uh, also yourselves. Remember, you are student council members. We need to keep going. We need to find new ways to get young people engaged with your programs. Um, just your input on, on, on this lockdown. Um, yes, I 100% agree with everything everyone has said thus far in the conversation. Um, I think it's, it's uh, very, I'm very proud of what the government has done thus far. I think it, I'm swelling with nationality and pride for our country because we've acted so fast in everything that's happened so far. Um, I think in terms of the meals that have to be, I think uh, I do agree. Uh, with in terms of everyone being different and the equality is not equal in our country because some people do live in poorer communities than others, which does make it a lot difficult. And I think um, because our government had to act so fast, we were not able to look at many of those um, inequalities that we have in our country, which made it difficult to um, fulfill the requirements of some people. Um, I think as the process goes on, we are finding better ways to deal with those situations. So, um, yeah, I think. Okay. All right, uh, Riaz, I want you to also make your input. Um, uh, I've got comments here, maybe one from Loiso that I want to touch on before you come in, Riaz. Uh, Loiso says mobile Wi Fi. I think it should be made available resource, as Councillor Shazi says, but I think. To avoid abuse, uh, it should be available to uh, available by student um, a number of some sort. I don't know how it would be monitored. Uh, maybe if you can touch on this without repeating what everybody has said, Riaz, uh, on mobile uh, Wi-Fi. Do you think it's something that could work? That could be, you know, helpful to students who have no access. Um. I think that it could be helpful, but it would have to be monitored as well, that it's not being misused. Because like many resources in our country, the resources are there, but it's being misused. So I think it has to be better management if it does come into play. And that if we do have this um, a mobile Wi-Fi thing, if that does come, then I think that it has to be... Uh, monitored thing because for example if you put it in certain areas not to mention any if you were to put it in certain areas it would be there and then for example hopefully not but it could get stolen and then the resource would be gone and then we'd be back at square one so in my opinion i think that it should it should come into play but it should be monitored and also just one thing with regards to the whole food packages and all of that um, mm. In my personal opinion, I think that that's, uh, I think that it's being well, it's being dealt with in a good way because personally, during this week, I've went out twice or three times, I think it was, to go help package food parcels for people in rural areas and distribute it. So I think that that's being taken care of in a good way. If it can just carry on that way, I think it would be fine. All right. Um, Faith, uh, do you want to say something? Kakhiso wants to say something. Kakhiso Muslina. Okay. okay. Um, should I speak first or would they like to go? You can, you can go first. Love. Thank you. Um, I wanted to touch on the thing of the mobile Wi-Fi and giving um, students in more rural areas or poorer communities access to mm -hmm. online education. I think everybody's kind of ignoring the solution that's right in front of us. And that is that um, those of us who have the privilege of internet, internet access and online education use it to 
the maximum so that once we go back to school, we're, we're already on a par or more or less with our syllabus so that our teachers can focus more on the students who did not get that same opportunity that we did. I think that the mobile Wi-Fi is a very good idea and I think it's out of the box, but like the previous speaker said, there's a very strong chance that it would not work well and it would not be available to all of the students in our country. So I think that um, as a student now, and those of us who do have access to internet, we should really focus on keeping ourselves up to date with our syllabus so that when we go back, those who did not have the same opportunity really get the attention that they deserve. Thank you. Oh, all right. Um, okay, cool. Thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, the next person who wanted to speak, uh, Doc, who did you say it was? I could not see the name. I think so. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to say to Faith, that was great. Um, in in, in, in protecting those mobile, mobile Wi-Fi things, uh, I suggest that there should be firewalls where you're only allowed to access educational sites because we are trying to accommodate the students that are not able to to work and keep up with other students and pretty much yeah that is it thank you okay thank you very much uh dr nyati we've only got four minutes left um uh, kuma do you want to say something quickly and then uh we can uh then you know uh have our final says and and draw up to a close kuma Oh, okay. Um, what I want to say is very short. I feel like this mobile Wi-Fi thing is a great idea. And what Gahisa said was very good. But we are forgetting that if these uh, mobile Wi-Fi are going to be placed in townships and rural areas, do the, chil do the children there have access to cell phones to actually use those, those systems? You know what I mean? I feel like we're forgetting that. And we just need to deal with the core problem before we provide the solution. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let me also just acknowledge, Doc, before you... Oh, Doc, you what? wanted to say something? Yes, so, sir. Um, there's uh, Nassim Hasim who had his hands up. But uh, yeah, we've okay. got only about three minutes now. Um, what I have to say is uh, very, quick, very quick and short. Um, uh -huh. I will be honest okay. about one thing. I, I do like the idea of the mobile um, Wi-Fi um, units, but the only problem is, see, I do have Wi-Fi and... I'll be honest, I've been, for the past few weeks, it has been useless. It hasn't worked, it times out, and there are those issues that may, what's it, that may occur. But now the problem is, I, if we're going to actually put money towards building all of these things and putting these things out, there is a chance that this might be the problem, because I was told by one of uh, Telcom's representatives that this is some international line problem. Um, I'm not 100% sure what it's about, but all I do know is that there may be a problem that is, what's it, that if we spend this money, there's another problem that we're going to occur and that we're going to um, encounter and it's not exactly going to be worthwhile and we're going to be back to square one once again. All right. Uh, we'll continue exploring ideas and uh, new ways of doing things uh, with this lockdown. Thank you very much for your inputs, everyone. We're not going to give everybody an opportunity to say uh, final goodbyes, but we thank you for participating. Also, let me thank the people that have participated on social media. Unfortunately, I could not read their comments earlier on. Spiso Songwane says, great platform. He's enjoyed himself on this platform watching on Facebook. Um, also, he goes on to say, great speaker and spokesperson of the youth. Our next presidential and government leaders, keep it up to my beloved youth. Would appreciate to meet up with this leadership team of council. So that's Spiso Songwane just giving you guys props for uh, just participating in a job student council and, and offering your work and service to our people. And then uh, Nico P. Simangwane says, uh, great initiative, thank you. Um, and uh, goes, she goes on to say, our future young leaders. Uh, Elia says, uh, the future of this country is in good hands. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just last comments. Uh, Abel Junior Langa says, what about, oh no, I've read that one. Uh, Loiso Boy says, this is so dope, Sipo. Uh, very encouraging. Keep up the good work. Uh, Mamtandi Mdlalosa says, cyberbullying is rife in schools. I like what Cameron said, that students should be careful on the internet 
and avoid mm. posting a note what you have posted and stay there forever. Um, and then Abel says the community's time to come on board to play their part by assisting a neighbor when one does not have data. So that's the comment from uh, Abel. And that's as much as I could read at this point. Um, Madam Speaker, you've got 30 seconds and then, uh, uh -huh. or maybe Dr. Nyati, 30 seconds, or Yuko, Madam Speaker, 30 seconds and then we wrap it up. Thank you very much to everybody for joining us. Thank you very much, Sipo, and thank you very much to all the participants, our future leaders. Uh, we really appreciate this platform. You know, time is an enemy. I wish we could have more time to debate and to talk about issues of young people. Uh, some of the issues that were raised today, uh, Sipo and Dr. Nyati, we will also pass them over to the MEC for education, who is very passionate about the education of, of a child, especially in Gauteng, who's the MEC for Gauteng. We have seen him launching many programs that are assisting learners. And one of those programs, uh, even before COVID-19, was uh, one student, one tablet, where he was trying to capacitate all the students, especially those uh, coming from disadvantaged areas and disadvantaged families. Uh, Tahir spoke about uh, important things that um, COVID-19, as bad as it is, it has taught us to do things differently. It has taught us to change the way we do, thing, uh, we do things and also to adhere to basic things like washing your hands. Uh, the mayor of the city of Johannesburg today, Councillor Jeff Mankubu, was launching a program called Shapa Matsoho. So that is a basic thing that we need to adhere to in terms of managing and preventing infection of COVID-19. Um, uh, without um, further ado or wasting more time, I want to say thank you very much for participating and those who participated uh, through the social media platforms. Tandim uh, Lalose, you spoke about the importance of uh, 4IR. I think uh, this is the time that we implement the fourth industrial, industrial revolution uh, as a nation. And to our young people, thumbs up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. You Nyati, Dr. Nyati I, I cannot uh, overemphasize your support, especially uh, today for our young people. We'll keep on mentoring our young people, and I hope this is not the last program we really need. And thank you for clarifying that issue of pay as UN. Uh, because I think it was really misunderstood and I hope that the parents as well will be informed that uh, this is what the president meant yesterday. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you um, very much. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Uh, next time. Absolutely. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, everybody. Right. Keep safe. Right. Keep yeah. well. Cheers. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. Okay, bye. Thank Cheers, you. bye. Man, no can't